function of the gene and the interaction that may happen inside the cell. So the main players inside the cell are DNA, RNA, and proteins. And through gene expression, DNA is trans transcribed to RNA, and RNA is translated to proteins. DNA contains the genetic information, and by transcription, as I told you, this genetic information is transcribed to RNA, and from RNA to protein. Proteins are the building blocks of the cell, so all the structures that we have inside the cells are made by proteins. Proteins also catalyze the reaction inside the cell, and it controls the gene regulation. The gene regulation is the controlling interaction which controls this gene expression from DNA to protein level. The intermediate uh, stage, the RNA, is usually the genetic information also, but it can also be involved in gene regulation and also it can catalyze, in some cases, some reactions. So, what, uh, one technology that is used a lot nowadays, and I will talk about more about it later, is gene expression companion. A microRNA measure, measures all existing RNA molecules at a certain stage or an environmental condition. So when we know all RNA molecules, we know which proteins are active for a certain stage inside the cell or for a certain con condition. And gene expression compendia is built by putting all available microarrays in, in one matrix beside each other. So, Compendia shows us which proteins are overexpressed or underexpressed for certain condition or a stage inside the cell. So, can you, I mean, can you explain me a little bit how the microarray works? So, you have a matrix, yeah, and then you put a sort of cells or some something you extract from the organisms. Uh, well. Or, and then, yeah. So a, a so microarray is like a plate. Yeah. And when we have these RNAs, it can bind to the complementary sequence biologically. So on that plate, we can see which RNAs are bind to this complementary sequence, and then we, we can know which RNAs are active for that condition. <coughs> so for each row, what do you have? So, well, a, certain, a single microarray is something like this. Mm -hmm. So we, we know the sequence on each uh, dot on the microarray. And when, when, when this microarray that exists for that certain condition, uh, the, the RNAs, uh, binds to those, uh, to those cells, we can see that some cells are, uh, I mean, when we watch this plate, we can see on, on which dots we, we have these bindings. And then we can, based on that, we can speculate which RNAs are overexpressed or underexpressed compared to the normal condition for, for, for this special microarray. And then each microarray can be like, like a row on that, uh, on, on, on that matrix. That is gene expression so, company. So, so yeah. in each element of the microarray, you put a, a piece of DNA. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, um, that yes. you know. No, yeah. you don't know. Yeah, you know. Uh, yeah, you, you, know. you put the no. piece that you know. Yes. Yeah. And then, and then you put another piece of the DNA, which you don't know, and look where it binds. Yes, we, we just throw all the marker, uh, all the RNAs. You still have that, that is on top of the of these microarrays yes. and see in which place it binds. Yes. And if it binds, means that that piece 
should be complementary to the one that you have exactly. down there. Exactly. So that in each element, how long is the piece of DNA that you have? It might be a short sequence. It's a short sequence. Then we, based on the short so, sequence... So the long DNA that you put, that you take the long chain, might my bind my there, but the rest of the chain remains from binder. Yes, yes. But then the rest of the chain is binded to somewhere else on the on that Well, if it, if it can, because maybe the, the, part, the part that wants to find somebody else is here, but it doesn't get there. But you don't have only one. I mean, this is Ah, you put you put many you put many many pieces of DNA. It's not just one gene. You put many genes, yes. and they buy the gene. Let's say. Yes. And typically, what is the size of the DNA that you have in each uh, cell? Well, it's it's depends on the technology. I think forty base pairs. I don't know. From here on, that turns yeah. about that. Yeah, and then they assemble. So after that, when they wash it, they assemble these pieces, and then they can say which RNAs are are overactive, or overexpressed, or underexpressed for certain conditions. So they wash this plate, uh, and they see which has been activated. But but still, you don't know in a typical DNA yeah. which is the sequence. I mean, you can deactivate in this side, and then this side. Yeah. But you don't know if in the real DNA this poison was poisoned before than that one or the other way around, I guess, because it's just... Yes, then, then there are some algorithms to assemble this part ah. based on the known uh, sequence that we have, and then you can say which sequences are overexpressed or underexpressed. Mm -hmm. Just a comment. This, this is not a device to, to sequence the genome. It's yeah. a device to now uh, the genome of some yeah. cell the common uh, is active, sorry, you put the mm -hmm. on the cell and some uh, is activated in some way, so some RNAs uh, arise, then you put those RNAs there, yeah, and, and you will see which of them, so it's not, you, know, you, don't know, you don't want to know the sequence, you don't want to know which products of the sequence are being produced from the some stress or some damage or something. So just, just to fully understand, okay, this NGN, N is the size of the microarray. Well, so far is this condition. No, 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 that. The, the last part is the, the compendium, so N is the number of genes inside the genome. So we have N genes inside the genome, okay. and each C1, C2 is the condition. So it's the summarized form, each row, uh, each, each, yeah, each row is like a summarized form of each microarray experiments that we have for okay. different conditions. But this is not a square matrix, right? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Yeah, usually we have more genes than conditions. So, um, so we have the regulatory network or regulatory interactions which controls this process from DNA to protein. We can have different interactions to to inhibit or activate this uh, this transcription and translation. So we, we can have protein DNA, RNA DNA interaction to to control the transcription, we can have RNA, RNA, RNA protein, and protein protein interaction for post transcription and translation activities. So, if we put this, uh, these interactions, if we put them beside each other, we will have a network of different kinds of interactions. And this controlling interaction, like the operating system of the computer, it controls the cell life by controlling this transcription and translation. So, one good way of representing this interaction is the graph base. So here, uh, the dots or the, vector, uh, the vertices are genes or proteins or RNAs and when we have an arrow means that one controls the other one. We have other kind of interactions inside the cell. So one thing that we have is protein complexes. Protein complexes are the proteins which are linked by non-covalent protein-protein interactions. And these protein complexes sometimes are making the structure inside the cell or they catalyze the reaction. They also can control the, reg the regulation. 
if we put all these interactions beside each other, we will have the protein interaction networks. And uh, this network, if we find modules in this network, we can find the, the structures that, that make our cell or the enzymes. And it's also an important question to find the <coughs> modules inside the protein interaction network. We also have the pathway, cellular metabolic and signaling pathway. A pathway simply is a series of chemical reactions that one compound is, is transformed to the last compound. In metabolic case, this last compound is more useful for the, for the cell. And in signaling pathway, with this series of chemical reactions, the signal is conveyed into the cell. And as you can see, we have catalysts, and usually these catalysts are protein or protein com uh, complexes that catalyze these reactions. We can have, if we put all the reactions beside each other, we can have also another network which is called the pathway network. So in general, we have two kinds of data sources inside the cell. The first one is a cellular pathway and interaction that I, I introduced. That we can have all levels of interactions, protein DNA, protein RNA, protein protein. Even we can have protein compound interactions. And the pathways, which are the metabolic and signaling pathways. What's the difference between both? I mean, topologically, the pathway has a beginning and an end. And? And, then, and then, whereas the other thing is just a network. Well, the, in, in pathway, the, the compound is also changed. Like we have the first compound and it's end uh, to the end compound. But uh, in the interaction, they just interact, so they don't catalyze any reaction. So, for example, in regulation, they control this regulation from the end to protein. I mean, the protein network uh, case, and sometimes they make a structure. The structure does something inside the cell, make part of the cell, but it doesn't catalyze the reaction. Well, I mean, this protein-protein reaction, usually when, I mean, very often when the protein is not joined, yeah. they, they may be enzymes or not, but then when they, they, they bind together, then they, have, they may be enzymes. They so can be enzymes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's more general. Let's, let's say a protein protein section more general because they can be enzyme or they can be a structure. And also enzyme can be RNAs also or a complex of RNA and protein together. So the other data source that we have is, is functional data. Here the important thing is to assign a function for the gene. The most uh, famous and useful uh, data source is gene ontology terms, where in gene ontology terms, each term contains some genes. So it's, it, for some genes, we give a function. So the topology of this gene ontology term is a directed acyclic graph, as you can see. There, yeah, and uh, it, when on the top of this directed acyclic graph, there are more general terms, so something like metabolic, and, and many genes may have this uh, this term, and as you go down, there are more specific terms, um, and when we have Usually, I mean, always the, the parent term contains all the genes of the of the child form. So you see the the size of the the terms decreases when you go down in this directed acyclic graph. The other data source for the function is gene coexpression. When when some genes are coexpressed at the same time, it means that they should be involved in, in the same biological processes or they should have 
related function. And the best way to assess the co-expression of gene is macroarray compendia, because it can show for which condition or state which genes are co-expressed. There are other data sources, but for this work, we use the compendia that we have for Nicolai. And now I will talk about the relation between the regulator interaction network, which is the controlling network of the gene expression, and other data sources inside the cell. So simply, we have something like this. A signal is conveyed into the cell with signal pathway, and then we have regulatory network, and this regulatory network control the expression of metabolic pathways, structural and functional components, which are some interactive protein, proteins, and also it also controls the expression of signaling pathways itself. We know that the outcome usually is very conserved when we look at the evolution, so metabolic pathways and structural and functional components are very conserved in the evolution, while the regulatory network is highly divergent, even for closer species. So the question is how come the, the outcome of the regulation, which is the co-expression, is so conserved, and also these things, which is also outcome of the regulation, are so conserved, but the regulatory network is so divergent. This divergence of regulatory network helps the organism to adapt itself to the new environment. So for, to answer this question, we should give a measure for the regulation of genes. So we define the new co-regulatory similarity measure. And we will show that this regulatory measure that, that we describe it can, it can predict the co-expression inside the cell. And then we look into the mutual relation between the genes involved in similar biological process and the regulatory network of them. And then finally we will compare the hierarchy that we can have from this regulation and the functional hierarchy inside the cell. So, as I told you, regulatory, some properties of the regulatory network so regulatory interactions evolves very rapidly. The degree distribution of the regulator is very similar to the power load. So many, many regulators have few targets, while few of them have many targets. And then we have the hierarchy in the network. When one regulator has more targets, is higher in the hierarchy and it's called more global. But also targets are important. So if a regulator regulates another regulator, it gains higher rank in the hierarchy, uh, or in other words, it's more local. And we have also the concept of autonomous regulator and collaborative. The autonomous regulator, as you can see here, it regulates or it controls the, the gene expression of their targets alone. While in the collaborative case, as you can see, the regulation is controlled by few collaborative regulators. So the autonomous ones are higher in the hierarchy or more important because they directly control their targets. So do you have others there? Well, yes, but uh, yeah, I took it from a paper, so. It should be like these ones, the, the big ones are regulators, and yeah, it should be arrows, but uh, since mostly are like red one regulator and a lot of targets, <coughs> we can show them. So, one simple pre representation of the regulated network is a bipartite graph, where in one side we have the regulators. And the other side, we have, sorry, we have the targets. So if we want, if we can find 
some collaborative regulators or clusters of the collaborative regulators in, in, in this side. It means that we can find a modularity in regulator networks. So, yeah, it's, so we have this side, we also have regulators. So this, this side, the whole genome exists, basically. Yes. If there's a regulator. So, so the, same, the same genome, in reg a regulator could be both the living two places, in regulators and in terms. Exactly. So for that, uh, we shuffle the the edges in a way that the, the distribution, the degree distribution remains the same. And we wanted to see, to compare it to what we expect. I mean, we did a Monte Carlo sampling. We wanted to, to see the, the probability that we get more targets for, for two, more common targets for two regulators. If this probability is low, means that they are less expected by chance to share so many targets. And uh, we also, since this p-value converts very slow, we also introduced another measure, which we we compared the the observed number of common targets to to the one that. We, we, we could have, to the average that we could have observed with different reshuffling terrains in this Monte Carlo. And we tried to find clusters in the regulator side, but we couldn't, well, we couldn't do that. Still, we, couldn't, we cannot say it's not modular, but at least in our first trial, we couldn't do that. One problem that we had with this abstraction of the regulatory network is that we lose the hierarchy because, as we mentioned, we have the regulators in both sides here and here, and we cannot really see the hierarchy in this representation. So we come up with the second idea to say, okay, now we have targets. Can we say a similarity? Can we define a similarity for these targets based on the regulatory Network that regulators that regulate them. So first, we decided to level the to to have this hierarchy. We, we decided to level the regulators, and we use the idea of Pagan. Pagan assigns a numerical weight to each element in a network that measures its relevant relative importance within the network. The Pagan idea came out from the World Wide Web application, but we could see some similarity with our problem. So in World Wide Web, the importance of page comes uh, from the number of the hits. So if one page gets receives more hits, it's more important. And in the regulatory network, if a regulator regulates more targets, it gains more importance. In World Wide Web, the importance of each page also re relates to, to the pages that link to them. For example, if a page is directly linked by Google, it gains more importance. And in the regulatory network, if a regulator regulates another regulator, especially more global regulator, it, it is more important regulator. So, by this, we can have like more global regulators which have higher page rank and more local ones which have the lower page rank. We know in the regulation of genes or in the gene expression that these global regulators with many targets they control like the the, the, the general uh, behavior of the cell. But what we actually observe as co-expression on the microarray is the effect of the more local regulators. So when we see some things are co-expressed, co mostly because of the local regulator, which have <coughs> less target, but it controls the expression of those less targets. So 
we gave a similarity measure for each gene as the additive of the one of uh, the inverse of the page rank of the common re regulator. Why? Why is additive of the common regulator? Because if two genes have more common regulator, it means that they they should show the co-regulation or co-expression more. And why is inverse? Because as I told you, more local regulators cause more co-expression. So we inverse it over the region. And we could easily extend this for the modular level. So if we have two modules of genes, or two clusters of genes, we can easily average over all pairs of genes inside the both uh, inside two modules. So we could calculate the co-regulatory similarity for all pairs inside the gene. You can see this part. And to to see the co-expression inside the gene, we use the Pearson correlation across all conditions. We use it on the Ecolab compendia. And as you can see, we, we had something like Gaussian distribution. And now we should show that the, the co-regulatory similarity that we defined is uh, highlight the co-expression. So basically, the, the, the gene pairs on the Left tail should be the, should be the gene pair on the left and right tail of this Gaussian distribution. So the, the simplest test that we could use was the Kolmogorov's Menov. We used that and we saw that the distribution that we, we could see that the distribution of these genes is different from the random one and they are they are more into the into the in these two tails, but we could say even more. So, if we take, for example, like 500 genes of this side, and we check the average co-expression, well, absolute average co-expression because we have here minus and plus. But if we average the absolute co-expression, as you can see. It's much higher than, than the average co-expression of all genes. And as we take less genes, but more co-regulated, it's more different from the, and uh, much higher than the, the co-expression of, of the, all genes inside the cell. You can say random because all the genes are involved. And we did the same thing with co-expression and the co-regulated, and we see as we go more into the to the tails of the co-expressed groups, we have higher co-regulator. Then we, we wanted to see the modules that we actually have, like the pathways or the protein-protein interaction modules, which are the structural and functional components. If we can predict them with the regulatory network or not. So for that, we took the genes which are involved in same metabolic or sorry, or signaling pathway from ECOSIC from the database uh, which has which has a database that have the genes which are involved in the same pathway, and to to detect the modules inside the protein network, protein interaction network, we use Oslo. We use it over the protein interaction network, and Oslo has some advantage to, to the other uh, clustering net networks for for the for for network or for the graph things. One main advantage is that we have uh, hop genes in all the regular all the biological network and these hop genes have many interactions. So these hop genes should be in several different markets and when we compare the Oslo results with the other methods, it could put this Hopkins in several modules. We also use Oslo to find the modules based on the co-regulator similarities. So the modules here means that the, the genes which should be co-expressed, or in other words, the genes have some similarity in the regulation. And then we compare those two, the, the actual module inside the cell and what we expected. 
And interestingly, you could see a good uh, relations. So here we put all the modules, actual modules inside the cell. And here, what we expected based on the regulatory, based on the controlling interaction, and we could see that we could expect the same thing. And in the next level, we went, we moved to the hierarchy. So we want to see the hierarchy that we can have from the functional data, data source. We can expect it from the regulatory network or not. So as I told you, the geo terms is a directed acyclic graph. And uh, in each term, each term is content of some gene. And if you go down, there are more specific terms. So we wanted to say which genes have similar function considering the whole hierarchy or the whole topology of the geo terms. What people usually does is to take the more specific geoterms, or the geoterms contain less genes. What we did is in a more, global, uh, more general way. We assign a vector with the number of geoterms to, to each gene, or when we work with module, to each module. So each element of this vector uh, shows how much the genes inside the modules are shared with the geoterm, and then we divide it by, the, and for this element we divide it by the number of genes inside the geoterm. We divide it because when there are more genes inside the geoterm, it's less informative. So if we have like 1,000 genes, it means that ge that geoterm is less informative. And when we want to see how much two modules are related based on the function, we use the cosine similarity of this vector. And then we could say how much these two modules are, are similar considering the whole topology of the geoterms. So we build the regulatory hierarchy. Uh, well, we, first we take the modules from the protein-protein interaction and, re and uh, signaling as the modules exist inside the cell. And we build the hierarchy based on the geoterms and also for the regulatory hierarchy based on the Bayesian idea. And interestingly, we could see a fair correlation between these two hierarchies or between these two dimensions. <coughs> so, in short, the con contribution of us in this work, we could introduce a new regulatory similarity measure. We could explain the observed co-expression on the microarray compendia based on the regulatory network. We see a good agreement between the regulatory network as the controlling network and other interactions inside the cell. And we could introduce a new species, a specific measure for functional similarity. And we could observe a fair correlation between the functional hierarchy and the regulatory hierarchy inside the cell. And uh, what we can do further, we can study the dynamic of the regulatory ne network. We can see the trends in evolution for this regulatory network. We can assess the robustness of the regulatory network with some deletion and addition uh, tested or with regarding test. We can, in the next state, we can predict or validate the interaction inside the regulatory network. And uh, for the inter data integration framework that exists, well, in data integration, people want to say which genes are related based on function, considering all the interaction networks and uh, all the possible data, functional data sources. So at least we have introduced two new similarity measures for the regulation and for functional similarity, which is more advanced than what people have already been using. And we can also predict and validate other kind of interaction like we have, we use in this world the high confidence protein protein interaction on pathways, but we can validate the less confidence one with the regulatory network. We, we don't have phosphorylation network. Phosphorylation is the controlling network, uh, the controlling interaction 
at the protein level, so it should be part of the regulatory network, but we don't have it for E. coli, so we can move in this direction to see if we can predict or validate the phosphorylation network. And the last network that we don't have for E. coli again, and just we have for this, is the genetic interaction network. Genetic interaction network, two genes are, are connected. If, if we knock out these two genes, inside the cell, cell cannot leave. So it shows some higher functional relation between two genes because it shows the, the relation in, in other terms. So if we knock out one of the genes, cell can leave, but we, if we like, remove those two genes, cell will die. And at the end, I want to thank all my colleagues and promoters in Logan and Ifis for helping me with this work. <coughs> have a lot of rewiring with the, with the regulatory network so they can shoot the target. We can have the deletion or inflation. So but what do you do? But isn't the regulatory network just something that you have in a living organism? Yeah, yeah. In one organism we have one regulatory network, but when we compare it between organisms, then we oh. can see the evolution. I see, so. Yes, exactly. So we can compare the interaction between two organisms. Yeah, but then you are, but, but then we still have to, you are basically guessing how, how is there a uh, sort of guessing, what is their actual evolutionary relation between these two organisms? Well, that's true. Because I'm, I'm sure it's not just data for organisms like every uh, hundred thousand years. <laughs> uh, well, no, then. But if we, we take organisms very close, mm -hmm. so if it's like two close bacteria or two close yeast, we can have enough data for both, and then we can compare the the regulator. And now we have some idea what the dynamics of the <coughs> of how this regulated network work. So we can see if it is help in both uh, organisms or not. What is the trend that we can sweep these interactions and get something stable for, for the next organism? Mm -hmm. So, this laboratory and meaning that this uh, gene ontology network or body function, yes. uh, how is that? Uh, I mean, how do people arrive to that? I mean, is it just. Uh, I mean, in, in a way, we call it related function. What, what is a function? I mean, how, how do they define function? Or okay. Yeah, <coughs> that is a good question. So this, the, the gene ontology terms is a concrete thing. So they say this function... We had before you had a graph with the... Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so we have a, like a concrete graph for all the organisms. So we have this function, and then they put the gene that they know for each species, they put the gene that they know that have that function. So the same geoterm exists, the terms is similar for human, mouse, bacteria, but the, the, the genes inside is different. So human has perhaps more genes in all those terms, and they have like genes for some specific terms, while but what, what is a function? I cannot read there. It's too small. I mean, so some examples of what what is each uh, of those uh, nodes? I mean, yeah. is it uh, glucose? Uh, so it's know, uh, digestion or, or so it's like biological process, cellular process, and it's getting more specific. Cell <coughs> comes to something, and this is like from RNA, pole two. Transcription DNA dependent, 
phosphoryl translations, I suppose, anti apoptosis, so this is like in checkpoints. It's like totally arbitrary in definitions of things. I mean, it's like, uh, I don't know, you can put also talking there. No? I mean, well, it's a function that. Uh, these are like, a, well, the biologists try to standardize the function to compare it between the organisms. So they, they, they put a district, like a concrete hierarchy, and then they define these things. Like, so these are the things that biology, biologists define. So maybe some functions don't exist for one organism, but then they don't put any genes in that a specific geotype. No, this is an argument between experts, right? So yeah, it's like expert based. But the point is that this graph is a hierarchical graph based on, <coughs> on the top you have general function. For example, metabolic mm -hmm. pathways. And on the bottom you have the specific function for an enzyme. So from the top you have metabolic function. In the next level you have lipid metabolism, glu uh, glucolysis. Mm -hmm. Um, and, whatever. and then next level from the lipid you have uh, ceramides, um, yeah, sphingomyelin, whatever. And then you go to the next level. Mm -hmm. You can call it arbitrary. Yeah. Yeah, but <laughs> Probably something like taxonomy is in organic. So it's something such, so, so arbitrary in it that people agree with that this represents some yeah, yeah, yeah. That's obvious that yeah. and a specific function is inside a general category. But that's something <coughs> obvious. It's arbitrary or it's obvious. I wanted to ask you, you have shown that if you know the regular, regulatory network, you can predict which genes will be expressed in the source circumstances. But I, I miss how do you measure, first, first of all, measuring the regulatory network itself? Uh, yeah, we, we download it from the, from the database. But I mean, but, yeah, but it's, it's a method which is independent on the core expression. So yeah. they yeah. use microarrays also? So no, no, no. Well, way. there are different ways, but uh, uh, as far as I know, they use other chips. Uh, so, uh, like, you know, these proteins are binds. To the to the gene and give the give the rise to the to the expression gene expression. So they look for the binding site and they check they check it in the other chip. So they give this time they give the binding site and they look if the protein can protein or the other name which are involved in the regulator can bind to these binding sites or not. They know if they regulate or not. Yes, so the technology is more or less similar to the MacLai, like these cheap things. Like on the chip we have a we have a sequence, but this time the sequence are not the sequence of the gene, but the sequence of the of the stream part, which are like the the part for the control. So I have a question. My my question is the following. So you say that uh, the regular the regulatory network adapts, right? So in a time scale that is shorter yes. than the protein one? Then it evolves much faster. Yes. So, then what do you learn from here in, uh, in the following sense? If the regulatory network changes, yes. but the protein are basically behaving in the same way, yes. so what is really changing? So, the, 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 the change the the I mean. is the environment. So, here you see. The regulator is directly related to the uh, environment, so it has two functions. First, it should get the signal from the environment, and then it, it starts to regulate different things inside the cell. So this signal changes very fast when the, when, because the, the different organisms should adapt themselves to the new environment. So the idea is that several uh, regulatory networks should regulate the same the same protein. exactly so the more uh, uh, adaptability I mean, the more possibilities you have for for changing the interaction while keeping the the protein functionality in the same way the better for the exactly so we should like and uh, we should answer how it is possible like how 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 come it's so flexible in, in rewiring and the, the outcome can be so stable because these, these metabolic pathways are very stable or the, 
the, the structure of protein, like these structures that we have inside the cell are very conservative. We have the conservation between, uh, between human and yeast, which is uh, what's one cell in this level. But what actually changes is these controlling circuits, which the regulatory network is. Okay, so time for a question? No? So thanks for the talk. Thank you.